Today is a very special episode. Today I'm going to be talking about an anime that got me through a very dark time and very well may have saved my life. Hey there, I'm Mike DeZorch, an old otaku. <laughs> I'm almost 50 and I like anime. Big whoop. Wanna fight about it? Now, around the turn of the 21st century, I was going through a dark period in my life. I was suffering from depression. And it was pretty bad. I didn't realize how bad until much later when after I had a, a change of environment, which can definitely help if you're suffering from depression. And later also I started watching Jerry Berg's channel, which is Barnacle's Nerdgasm. And he, he came out and admitted that he was suffering from depression and he talked about his depression and as he was saying things, I realized these things were happening to me too. That's how I felt. When you're suffering from depression, it stops making you give a shit about things. You stop caring about them. And the one person in my life who could have helped me and got me the hope I needed responded in anger and resentment instead. And that just made things worse. And it made me withdraw within myself. And it made me stop caring and giving a shit about things. And it really affected our relationship, really affected my life, it affected my career, everything. And like a lot of people who suffer from depression, we try to desperately find some way to escape. We find some way of escaping from reality. Some people dive into games. Some people dive into movies. Some people go there, which I almost did. And the reason why I didn't go there was because I started getting into a series on Toonami called Tenchi Muyo. There are multiple Tenchi Muyo continuities, multiple series, but the one we're going to be focusing on today is the one I got into the most, and that's the OVA. Now, back then, Tenchi Muyo was airing on Cartoon Network during the Toonami slot, and before that, it was released on Laserdisc and VHS by Pioneer over in Japan and here in the U.S. So it started with me watching the series on Cartoon Network, and it was unlike any other anime I'd ever seen. Now, I'm, I am not new to anime. I grew up with anime. I started watching Simba the White Lion and Speed Racer back in the 70s, and then I watched um, G-Force, which we know as Gachamon, and also Voltron, which we know as Go Lion, and... Uh, there's another series involved with that, I forget the name of it, but I, I, I will cover that series at some point in this, in this, uh, I will cover that anime at some point in this series, eventually. And also Robotech, which was created from Mac Ross, Southern Cross, and Genesis Kleiner Mospita. So I'm not new to anime at all, but I was new to this kind of anime. And Chimuyo is a harem anime, specifically a sci-fi harem anime. The series was the brainchild of Kagishima Masaki, and he's known for certain tropes, such as making all of his characters related to one another in some fashion. Seriously, I've seen fan charts showing the relations between characters, who's father to who, who's cousin to who. There's even an official chart that was shown in a spin-off TV series of the OVA called Tenchi no GXP, and it's almost as convoluted as the ones the fans came up with. The series takes place in Masaki-san's old stomping ground, which is Okayama, Japan. Not Okinawa, that's different. It's Okayama, a very mountainous region. Now, the main character is Tenchi Masaki. He is a high school student, typical Japanese high school student. His father, Nobuyuki, is an architect and they live in the city. And his grandfather is 
to Hira Masaki and he's a priest at a Shinto shrine up in the mountain. Now Tenchi's led a rather ordinary high school life. He does, it, he does go to the mountains and spend the summers with his grandfather and learns to be a Shinto priest. And that's about it in his life. That's all his life has been. Just ordinary. Nothing special. And then suddenly, one summer, yeah, things go really weird. Tenchi grew up hearing stories from his grandfather about his ancestor named Yosho, who apparently fought a demon and locked it up in a prison not far away from the shrine. So one day, Tenchi decides to find out if there's any truth to this legend, that his ancient ancestor fought and defeated a demon and locked it away. Well, come to find out, the legend was true. Now you're asking yourself, okay, you're talking about a demon, but you said this was a sci-fi series, so what's up? Well, it turns out the demon's not really a demon. The demon is a alien. Actually, a pretty hot alien named Ryoko. Well, Tenchi ends up getting into a fight with her, which I think she was just messing with him, because later on, uh, you find out that she's known him in his entire life, but he never knew she was there. She was always appearing to him in astral form. And so not long after Ryoko suddenly shows up, and Tenchi finds out that not only was she, she was not just a demon, she was an alien, then another alien shows up. Princess Ayaka from the planet Jirai. And then there's the revelation that she's looking for her brother. And her brother is Yosho, his ancestor. Which means Tenchi is part alien. Yeah, and Ayaka's got some pretty serious issues. I mean, she wants to marry her brother. She's traveled the galaxy for 700 years because she wants to jump her Onichan's bones. Traveling with Ayaka is her little sister, Sasami, who basically captures everybody's heart. And she's a lolly before lollies were a big thing in anime. And she's not exactly innocent. Um, there was a point in the story where she uses some of Nobuyuki's erotic light novels and convinces Ayaka and Ryoko that they are guidebooks on how to romance Earth guys. And then she watches the chaos ensue. It's impossible to talk about Sasami without also talking about Ryooki. Ryooki is Ryoko's ship, but she's also a cat rabbit sort of combo thing. She's a shape changing ship. She can turn into this cute, adorable little cat rabbit or cabot. And she and Sasami are absolutely inseparable. Sometime after Aeka and Sasami show up, then the next character in the series appears, and that's Mahoshi. So I'm going to go a little bit into her because the way she is portrayed in the series varies depending on what continuity of the series you're watching. I'm focusing mainly on the direct-to-video OVA of Tenshi Moyo. There are other series, and I'll just touch on those briefly. Mahoshi is a officer of the Galaxy Police, but she is such a ditzy airhead, I wonder how she got that job. Oh, that's why. Now with Mahoshi in the cast, the Sage is set for the villain of the first OVA to show up, and that's Kagoto, and he's a, he's a nasty bastard. During the battle with Kagoto, Mahoshi's bumbling results in the arrival of another new character, Washu. Washu has been imprisoned on Kagoto's ship. It turns out it was her ship. He stole it from her. She built it. Why? Because, though she looks very young, like a 12-year-old girl, she's a super genius. Not only really that, we find out she's Ryoko's mom. Well, technically not mom. She's her creator. Ryoko is an artificial life form, and she made Ryoki, too. And this is the part where you have to start getting into the explanations of this series, because there's so much to it. Now, Masaki-san 
wrote a series of light novels which were based around the series. And he also wrote a lot of Jojinchi, or fan manga, to cover a lot of the storyline, fill in a lot of the lore that you didn't get with the OVA. And there's a lot of information, a lot of complexities, and to understand the series, you almost have to understand that material. Now, it's not completely necessary, but it helps to understand exactly what the hell is going on. Okay, I have to warn you now, I'm about to get into some serious spoilerific stuff. So if you're curious about watching the series, it's all available over on Funimation. You can watch the OVA series, as well as all the other TV series. There's one I would recommend that you avoid, which is Tenchi in Tokyo. We really don't like talking about that one. Now, Kakashima Masaki-san likes to make his characters all related to one another and have these really complicated interpersonal connections to each other. So you better have something to write down because I'm only going to repeat this once and this stuff gets complicated. Now the whole reason why Yosho was on Earth in the first place, or I say Katsuhito, because Yosho and Katsuhito are the same person, the whole reason why he's on Earth in the first place is because of Ryoko, of course. He fought and defeated her. Well, the reason why he fought and defeated her was because of Kagato. Kagato controlled her mind. After he imprisoned Washu on her own ship, he took control of her creation, Ryoko, and he used her to attack planet Jirai. Now, she was kicking Jirai's ass, and there's a reason for that. Now, Kagato wanted to get Tsunami. And tsunami is a powerful sentient tree on planet Jirai. She is the mother of all the trees that the Jiraiyan royal family grow their ships from. They're sentient, wooden, living spaceships. Now, there's a secret to Tsunami. He's not just a sentient tree, he's a goddess, and she's a sister to Washu. So yeah, Washu is a goddess, and Tsunami is her sister, and they have another sister named Lady Tokami. You meet her briefly in the second OVA, and then you see more of her in the third OVA. So there are three goddesses. Now there's something very special about Tsunami, of course. Not only is she the mother tree on Jirai, she and Sasami have a special relationship. During Ryoko's attack, Sasami is fatally wounded. To save her life, Tsunami merges with her. They still have separate forms right now, but they're actually the same person. And eventually, They'll merge physically and their personalities and memories will merge into one. So Sasami and Tsunami will be the same person. Now it also turns out that Tenchi's birth is the result of manipulations by the three goddesses. Or specifically by Tsunami. She was sort of messing around with the bloodlines of the Jiraiyan royal family in order to create him. In fact, all three of the goddesses were all trying to create a super being with that cataract sort of thing. Lady Tokimi went off to create her own. Z, he shows up in the third OVA and he's not exactly what she was looking for. Washu, she decided to live the life of a mortal. So she locked away her memories, locked away most of her powers and gems, and she created Ryoko and Ryoki. She gave Ryoko her gems, which is why she was so powerful when she attacked Jirai while under Kagato's control. It was why the Jiraiyans discovered that Ryoko's power and the power of their ships had a similar source. Still with me? Good. So at the end of the first OVA, it turns out that Tenchi is the being that they were wanting to create. And after a long battle with Kagato between Ryoko and Aeka, Tenchi suddenly shows up 
exhibits these powers and just basically one-shots the villain right then and there. And it's sort of anticlimactic. Now, if I covered all the connections and all the hidden details, we'd be here for more than an hour. So, instead, I suggest you go check it out yourself. Uh, there are uh, wikis for the series. Go check that out, too. Focus specifically on the OVA because there's also the other continuities, which are not as good. Uh, Tension Universe is okay, but the OVA is the most fleshed out. Back up! Now, the Tension Liu Ryoki OVA is not a perfect series. I mean, it's got some slight pacing issues, which a lot of series do, and it's not as bad as some other series are. And it, the story can be a little bit all over the place, but it's not as bad as others. And the animation is actually not that bad either. The series has aged rather well. It's in that little sweet spot where you go from animation of the early 90s to the late 90s and early 2000s. It's sort of in there where animation is starting to transition over to the way it looks now. They haven't fully gone into digital yet. It's still all hand-drawn, but it's actually drawn pretty well. Not as badly as a lot of early 90s series were, which this is an early 90s series originally. But it's not as bad as that. It's sort of in that transition point. Sort of... I would say somewhat on par, maybe a little bit better than the animation for Evangelion, so to speak. The animation was done by AIC, a studio which had previously known for doing stuff like Bubblegum Crisis and you know, Oh My Goddess. Later on, you'll know them for series like R15 and Nyan Koi. Now, the animation quality is sort of hit or miss. Sometimes it's on par with Evangelion, and other times it's not. The series came out around that time when animation quality was sort of in flux. It was transitioning from the style that you saw in the 80s to something that's more familiar that you see nowadays. So it's sort of in that transition point, and sometimes it's good, Sometimes it's not. It's impossible to explain the OVA series without really talking about the other continuities as well. You see, Masaki-san was involved in the first OVA and he left during the middle of the second OVA project over creative differences. And there was some animosity between him and some of the other staff and so when the TV series was made, he had no involvement. That was Tenchi Universe. And a character that he intended to be Tenchi's mom was made into a completely different character in that series. You see, Masaki-san always intended for Kione to be Tenchi's mom. He, eventually, she was made that in the third OVA, but in the TV series, she was made a galaxy police officer who was Mahoshi's partner and who was traumatized from the experience. Which also I have to talk about Mahoshi's portrayal in the three series. Now in the OVA, she's a ditz. But at least she's a self-aware ditz. She's able to, you know, live normally and on her own without others. But... Her version in Tenchi Universe, she absolutely cannot function without Kione. And it makes me wonder, how in the heck did she get her job in the Galaxy Police? I mean, I mean, yeah, that helped, but uh, she is the chief of the Galaxy Police's granddaughter in the OVA, she's not in the TV series. And then there's the other TV series. Um, in the US, it's called 
Tenchi in Tokyo. In Japan, it's called Jin Tenchi Muyo. In Japan, it flopped. And there's a reason for that. I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to throw up in my mouth. Now, technically, there is a fourth series, Ai Tenchi Muyo, that was a short, um, another short OVA series, completely different story in this one. And it was created for the 20th anniversary of the Tenchi Muyo franchise. And it's actually pretty good. Now, there were three movies, three films. First was Tenchi Muyo and Love. And that was a movie that was directly tied into the Tenchi Universe series, was a continuation of it. Tenchi the Movie 2, Daughter of Darkness, was done by Masaki-san. Now, he wasn't supposed to make a movie based on the OVA. So what he did is he borrowed elements from the OVA to create this, the film. And the third movie, Ten, you know, Tenchi Muyu in Love 2, was a continuation of the story after that. And what happened in that movie was sort of a slap in the face to a lot of fans who were hoping for a final resolution to a lot of things. And we sort of kind of got it, but it was a weird film. It involved a past love of Yosho's who died and was sort of still alive in a tree and it involved time travel and the animation quality was very different. The character designs were different. It was a strange movie and a lot of fans don't really acknowledge it as being a part of the TV series. It's, it's a film that has a lot of, a lot of contention with Tenchi fans because it doesn't sort of fit. So I was going through a very dark time with this series, and it got me into fan fiction, and writing fan fiction helped me to cope with what was happening to me. I should have gotten the help I needed, but I didn't. So I did what a lot of people suffering depression do. We find an escape. Those who can't usually end it, and I came close. But this series prevented that, and that's why it holds a special place for me. Because if it weren't for this series, I probably wouldn't be here today. Next time I'm going to be talking about an anime series that has special historical significance to the anime industry. And it's based on a manga from an artist who is also very important in Japanese pop culture and the history of Japanese pop culture, and she's still producing manga today, and her her series have been created into some of the most popular anime of all time. So, come January, we're going to be talking about Rumiko Takahashi's Yurushi Yatsura. Thanks for watching. Are you sick of all the drama in gaming social media? then come on over to the official Gamers Bay community in Google+. We're a fun, safe, and drama-free community. Links are found in the video description. If you like this video, please like, favorite, and subscribe. Also, here's a couple other videos you might find interesting.